Hello, everyone, and welcome back to part two of Navigating Business, Finding the Right Investors, a business podcast hosted by the U.S. Pan-Asian American Chamber of Commerce through the Community Navigator Pilot Program of the Small Business Administration. My name is St. Hung, founder and CEO at Universal Processing, national spoke under U.S. PAC for CNPP. For this episode, we'll be continuing our conversation with Porter Wong, board member and CNPP consultant at the Western chapter of US PAC. Well, yeah. we're, we're still talking about businesses early in the cycle, but it's still right. very, very good advice to think about both mm -hmm. sides, the software mm -hmm. and the hardware. When, when it comes to loans, uh, what should a business owner look out for or prepare for? Like, for, for example, do you think that there needs to be a minimum amount of time in your experience before individuals or business owners look for loans? I I would say that, uh, of course, right, if, if uh, you know, business looking for a loan, mm -hmm. it's depending on the status of the company, right? You know, uh, how is the how is the company doing at the point at a time when they're looking for loans, right? Yep. So, um, so even like let's say for SBA loan, mm -hmm. uh, your company, you know, for the company to who are able to get the SBA loan, you usually are pretty established, right? Yep. <laughs> you, you you probably need to have like, you know, like I think minimum three years of uh, pretty good uh, revenues and you know, uh, you know, profitable, and then you might have some depending on how much you want to borrow, you need to have like. You know, uh, collateral. You know that kind of thing. Uh, so, so those I would say, like those are usually for a little bit. You know, for companies that they are more established. Okay. Right? But but then if you're a new one, you're still struggling. Uh, let's say you. I mean, you even. Have, I mean, you're personally. You even have like credit score issue. Let's say, uh, like seven hundred or below or something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh. But uh, your business is going fine, but it's not as profitable as as uh, you know as as you like. Then CDFI will be a good uh, resource. CDFI, then, yeah, can, CDFI, can right? Uh, CDFI. Yeah, so it's almost like a credit union, mm -hmm. right? And then uh, a kind of setting is also uh, uh, you know it's a regulated uh, financial institution, mm -hmm. and they normally just, you know, it's a surface local uh, business, right? Uh, so let's say you are in, in you are in New York City, then you need to find the one that you know serve the local area, and and then uh, they will accommodate. So different CDFI have different like a lending limit. I mean, in terms of you know the loan amount. Okay. Uh, some at uh, can be as little as five thousand, and then all the way up to like you know eight hundred eight hundred thousand or something. Each one is different, so you need to look for the one that uh, you know feed your business. Uh, and I think more typical uh, the range loan the 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 range of the loan is anywhere between like uh, like fifty k to like two three hundred k. I think those are more common. Okay. And and then they will so they will entertain com, uh, you know business that they're not able to get any SBA loan. Mm -hmm. uh, the interest rate is still very reasonable. It's not like a shock, you know, a loan shock kind of thing that charges you twenty percent interest. Mm -hmm. um, and then if that's if not even loan are, sharks, I, I asked for <laughs> I, I was in the market. I was curious what it is. Twenty yeah. percent of the private equity funds out there, not naming any names, but the private equity funds charge pretty close to twenty percent today. I know with uh, I know, how I know. high the interest rates are, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think the twenty percent, my twenty percent, probably a little bit dated because now the interest rate been rising quite a bit. Yeah, um, yeah. But then if if people like kind of struggling and then they not able to, let's say, even get like five, six thousand dollars to start their their business. Mm -hmm. Then their CDFI, they they willing to loan them the money with very very limited you know minimal you know check, okay. uh, like you know credit check or things like that. Even though let's say your personal score credit credit score 
it's six thirty or something, right? They will be okay. willing to loan you. Um, and then there's also another one that's like kind of crowdfunding. Okay. Uh, you can borrow up to fifteen k, and and then there's zero interest. Really? Yeah. Are we zero. talking like a, a Kickstarter? Oh no 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 Kiva no no it is purely a loan. Kickstarter kind of for Kickstarter is kind of like pre-order like let people pre-order your product basic basically. Okay. That's what okay. It is. I, I, I hear you. You, uh, you mentioned uh, yeah. crowdfunding, so you're you're saying that the U.S. Department of Treasury provides the uh, CDFI, which is the Community Development Financial Institutions Fund, and that's mm-hmm. basically a pool of money that the government has put aside to help loan, give favorable loans to the small mm-hmm. business owners out there that might not mm-hmm. have the best credit score or the business longevity, right? Mm-hmm. But on top mm-hmm. of that, is the crowdfunding? Also part of the CDFI? No, crowdfunding is not part of the CDFI. Um, the program I talk about that you know people can borrow ten to fifteen thousand dollars, which mm-hmm. is uh, like zero interest. Yeah, it, it basically it really is really go out to crowdfund. So could they? You might have like uh, uh, you know a hundred, maybe even two hundred. You know. Uh, you know, people willing to chip in like 50, 20 bucks a piece. And then, and then with that, make up that like 10 to 15 K. Wow. Um, so it's not, it's like purely just, you know, uh, they help you to basically crowdfund uh, from individuals uh, around the world, actually. Okay. Locally. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. So all yeah, right. It, that's all. Mm-hmm. It, it, that's sounds a lot, a lot more, yeah, it sounds a lot more difficult than uh, going through the CDFI. And the SBA though, so yeah, no, but no, no, yes, I know because if it only like need ten or fifteen k, mm-hmm. uh, you need to sign up. There's a little, little bit upfront upfront work you need to do, but then you know the the you know uh, the loan company actually uh, is kind of in a it's a fintech company, right? It's nonprofit, okay. and they basically do all the work for you. Oh, really? Yeah, it's like oh, everything is everything is software, right? Yeah, right. They, they do the promotion. So, so they do the uh, promotion, you know, through the platform and then, you know, whoever in the network, right. Interested in your business and willing to help. And then they just all chip in a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Great. Great. So great. There's, there's software case, for everything. No these credit days. check, no nothing. Huh? Yep, yep. Yep. Yeah. So there's software for everything these days. Mm-hmm. Um, Porter, you, you've been in the investment community for a while now. So it, it makes me curious uh, to hear since you've, interacted with so many businesses, especially early stage businesses firsthand. Is there a pattern or are there certain qualities that you find in these investments in these businesses that pique your interest as an investor? And can you give some examples of some of these businesses that you've been successful in working with and investing? in? Uh, as always, right? Uh, it's the um... Now the, the company that I help out, right, is like mm-hmm. it has two parts, right? Uh, two ca- I would say like two categories, right? One category is you know company that I hope that one day they can be become a unicorn. Okay. Right. So for those, uh, it's like for me, it's like either you go big or go home, right? And okay. I, I usually look for uh, look for uh, a company that they have something truly unique right something that you know uh revolutionary right it's it's not just like making like uh you know a a few step of improvement whatever or whatever's out there right now right sure sure uh so i tend to look for those like like you know one of a kind uh because like any uh, venture investing is pretty high risk right of course so I, I try to look for the company that they, uh, you know, I'll, I'll pay up um, patient and also try to look for those can be like winner takes all kind of situation, um, those company, right? Winner takes uh, all. What do you mean? Like they create their own space, they fulfill a need, and then they have a lock or a stranglehold on that yeah, space that they yeah. created? Yeah, because, because like normally if you look at, you know, any industry, you, you talk, because again, like if we, we you know thinking about unicorn it has to be something big right 
Mm -hmm. So then it has to be has to be some company that they have a chance to, you know, again like dominate right the entire industry. Right, it, it may not be the only one for sure, right? But you you normally uh, uh, you know each uh, new each sector you have like a handful of uh, uh, a big player, right? And that and that's it. And then there's uh, really no room for anybody else, right? So we I try do. to yeah. I try to look for those, and hopefully one day they can do that, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll give you one example, right? So there's a, a hardware company that I I uh, been helping uh, for the last couple of years. Uh, they're working on some kind of like uh, commodity product. Mm -hmm. uh, so they are basically coming, uh, they, they, you know, it's a bunch of PhD. When they started, it was only one PhD uh, from MIT. Now they have a team of six or seven, I think seven PhD, and then a uh, another like uh, these are people now. I kind of help them to, you know, guide them to put the team together. And and then so what they what they do uh uh what they do is basically have a new way of making uh solar cell like you know when you're doing solar panel yeah right now it's a hot thing right you know everywhere around the world people want to push for renewable energy sure and then everybody knows that you know solar panel uh manufacturing and the business actually 100 percent right dominated by chinese right there's only like you know two or three uh chinese company that they basically glob up you know the entire you know segment you know market segment okay uh so so they have a, a new way to to do that and then um the price point and also the manufacturing first of all the manufacturing can be restoring easily they don't need any special equipment uh, so but then in, in and then you know in terms of performance they are on par or exceed the performance but then you know the, the in terms of the the uh, ease of manufacturing you know uh, all this like you know water usage like uh, also uh, the end product cost is like significantly lower 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 than what's out there right now so okay. then if they if if they able to you know execute right then they have a huge potential that they can, that that basically they can clean up the uh, uh, you know the all the business okay so so the business that you invested in is in the clean energy sector yeah, specifically for that one, solar cells yeah and you're yeah. you're thinking that if these phds come together and are successful in innovating that space they can come up with a better product for less money and give the chinese a run for their money or give them some strong competition that's that's the plan right oh yeah they they can easily blow them all off the water right so so they are pretty close to having uh i hope that like uh, this year they'd be able to uh, start setting up a pilot manufacturing line okay i've been actually helping them to look at uh uh you know manufacturing site for mm -hmm. the first pilot line but they also have have already have customer line up too so okay now porter just just curious here was it when you look at in investment target do you only look at the business or do you look at the entrepreneurs or do you look at both or you know you talk about the product and we we've been talking about product for a lot of this segment already but what about the people uh how do the people factor in whether it's this product this investment or other investments so so usually it's three things right mm -hmm. uh so one thing is like uh you know are you investing in a business or are you investing in a technology and business okay right because some of the like for example right like if you talk about the software software space mm -hmm. and uh app space actually before our call i was talking to some uh, uh online learning company mm -hmm. right so it's totally software based um they seems like they you know having pretty decent traction um but but nowadays like you when you you know when you in that space is not much technology because everything is there already pretty much it's just you know how you kind of like integrate everything together i mean there's still some engineering but it's like but but it's like you like you know you don't need to have something in their case right it's not really something breakthrough okay. so in that case that 
but they did a nice job of integrate everything together, right? So, mm -hmm. so, so in that case, you you kind of like you know that you know there's not not so much in the technology side, right? Of course, they write their own software, still the IP, but yeah. that, but it's not like you know you have, for example, right? So the difference between is like okay, you 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 have a open like a chat GPT that totally you know like different, right? I mean, there's a lot a lot of like you know deep technology there, but versus you just kind of like you know do some you know like uh, uh, minor improvement like I said earlier and then just kind of integrate everything together uh, so so then in those cases there's not much technology there so then what you invest is invest in the business then in that case you will look at like how good the business is doing right but mm -hmm. then you know for the one that you know have a a, a, a good technology then when because I, I'm you know working with early stage company in those cases then you 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 kind of like you know emphasis a little bit more in the technology side, right? Uh, uh, you know less on the business side. Of course, they need to have a good business potential for sure, right? Sure. So so the way is a little bit different. So this is like for the company itself, and then the other other piece is very important. Of course, it's a team. Yep. Right. Uh, I have seen many examples that you know um, you know you know when there's some tough decision comes in uh the team just you know not able to work together as a, as a team I'm, I'm talking about the founders right yep and then the company will fall apart right will okay. fall apart. so so there's also cases that you know i you know it's actually a good friend of mine uh he he had a couple exit and then um uh and then uh like when he when he started his company uh you know, he he actually uh, he had his partner uh, uh, work for Google for some time. Then you know, before Google went IPO, so at that point when they start their own company, they actually don't need anything. I mean, they have all the money, right? They need. Yeah. So they so they kind of uh, bankroll bankroll the company at the beginning, but then the thing is this, right? So two years into that, right, they need to completely change the business model. They just find out whatever they did. They, they were having uh, it's a software company but then they really have a soft problem to monetize it okay so the same team right they face a problem and then they completely completely change course right and then like two years later right they they uh, uh they're able to sell the company for a very very significant significant amount of money uh but then it's kind of completely different what they start out to do Okay. So, so, so this is an example, right? That you know, you need to have a smart team, right? And then they know they, you know, they they can work together, and also, you know, they know how to, you know, solving problem together. Okay, so that's that's because, important. Yeah, what yeah, I'm hearing because, is, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. what I'm what I'm hearing is you're saying that in the the team becomes critical uh, when there are huge headwinds or huge issues. In this case. The team pivoted away from their original intentions and restructured their business model and went towards a different direction. And within a few years, uh, was you know was uh, the recipient of a very very generous exit. And it sounds yeah. like they had to be resilient. They were you know they were able to persevere. And uh, yeah, uh, what, what what else would you say that uh, you saw within that team? Okay, so. So I think that you are a uh, an operator yourself. I'm sure you you face all those problems, right? Uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, along the way, you know, when you know that's how you come to where you are today. So uh, teamwork is important, right? Um, and then uh, uh, also that um, they 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 often right the company they don't have like a plan B when they want to start this business, mm -hmm. right? So, because a lot of uh, uh, founders, right, they were saying, "Oh, let me try this out," and then you know, I I give it a year. If it doesn't work, I'm gonna quit. I mean, you know, or maybe I can go back to where you know my profession is. You know, to me, usually it's a red flag because oh. no okay. nobody can time, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe like a certain like you know after six months or maybe after a year, I don't you know make that much money. I'm gonna quit. Right, so so you already it's a sign that you're not giving in like a hundred, a ten percent, 
right? Mm-hmm. To make that happen, right? You know, you know that, right? To start a business and make it successful is very, very, very difficult. <laughs> of course, right? I, I know mean, the first like thing, yes. Right, right. Yeah. And then to me, I, I would say like almost every single company, they will have a near-death experience. Mm-hmm. So that's the real test, right? How you can hold the team together and then, you know, and, and move on, right? And then jump over the hurdles, right? So, so that I think that is very important that, you know, you, you, you're 100% dedicated to what you do and then there's no plan B. Okay. Right. All right. That's, that's fair. That's fair. I, yeah, I do hear a lot of, uh, they use the term entrepreneur, the, the people that want to be entrepreneurs, they're like, oh, you know, I'll give it a year or two. And, uh, yeah, I usually immediately become disinterested in what business plan they have to provide, because if they're not dedicating their entire focus, their entire life into this business, there is almost no way they can even compete with the entrepreneurs out there that are putting in a hundred hours a week, having nothing, Mm -hmm. no family, no kids, you know, no boyfriend or girlfriend, just, this is the business. This is Mm -hmm. what I want to do. And versus somebody like, Oh, I have a job at Amazon or I have a job at the bank or, you know, I work at McDonald's, but I've got something really good. Don't Mm -hmm. invest in those people, right? It's (laughs) it's 99%. It's not going to work out. And if you're an entrepreneur yourself, if you're not willing to give up almost everything to start a business, I mean, it, it, to you and me, I think it makes sense, right? Because if you're, you have a 40 hour job or a family or this and that, and you don't have 60, 80 or 100 hours to go make this something new, then you, your, your rate of going from zero to 60 miles an hour, driving fast, driving your business fast, the, the potential, the possibility drops down close to zero because you're competing with other founders that have startups. They have no attachments. They're just driving zero to a hundred, right? Who's going to get there first. Right. So I I think it, I think it makes sense. I'm personally um, guilty of making a few investments and listening to some of those people, you know, giving them a little bit of money. It's like, Oh, we need money. Um, If you, if you get this money, will you quit your day job? No, no. It'll just make this project a little easier and you make their lives easy. But, uh, you know, they're, they're not willing to take that step and really commit 100%. So it is definitely yeah. a huge, huge. Yeah, uh, the, yeah. The other thing is that, you know, uh, the team, the fun, you know, uh, the founders team need to be uh, coachable and then also open mind. Okay. Now, coachable and open mind doesn't mean that, you know, they don't have any backbones. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that, you know, they will listen to everybody, you know, like tell them, and then they will change the course and change the direction. Okay. The key thing is like you you open your mind to listen, mm-hmm. and then if it's something makes sense, then you put in some time to think about, right? Yeah. So one of the one of the very important thing that a lot of people miss is that they they not making an effort to find out what they don't know. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. So those are, you know, what you don't know, are often the key factors that can make or break your, your business. Right. Because you have not try to find out, you know, like listen to other people's opinions, uh, um, and, and, uh, also like not to try to find out, uh, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, what's out there. You, you kind of like have yourself like close into a, I would say, like, a box yourself in in a closed room with mm-hmm. tunnel vision. Yep. Right. And then, right. So, so, uh, so very often you always think that, oh, what I'm thinking is right. Right. I should just go this way. And then it doesn't matter who tell me, you know, what is the right thing to do. I'll just totally ignore them. Right. And that's not uh, the way to go. Right. That's not okay to go because nobody knows everything. Of course. Right. Everybody make mistake, right? So actually, if you're lucky, I think a lot of these very smart and very successful people, they only succeed like fifty percent of the time. Okay. Right. Right. So yeah. so yeah. So I think that is a very key component. Mm-hmm. You know, to be you know to be successful. Wonderful, wonderful. Very key yeah. component. Uh, being coachable, willing to learn, open mindedness. That's great. Mm-hmm. So these are all amazing 
nuggets of wisdom that you're sharing with our audience and the prospective entrepreneurs out there. Um, I wanted to ask you one more thing. What's the biggest tip you can provide to the you know future entre entrepreneurs out there on how they can identify the right investor for their business and for them? Okay, so I okay, so one very key thing is to uh, you need to create okay, you basically need to solving problems right and mm -hmm. not to create something that is looking for a problem to solve oh, right okay could you could you explain okay. yeah okay so so for example for example right um uh you okay so uh, okay okay let's say use use a technology uh, uh using a technology example right mm -hmm. uh but that actually applies to everything sure. right so uh, okay, so let's say if I am an engineer, right, and then I come up with some some very advanced you know, technology for a certain product, right? Mm -hmm. So then I put all my time into it, and then I come up with a prototype. Mm -hmm. But then, right, uh, it may not have a market, right? So you okay. have a, this cool technology, right, but you don't have a market. So then you 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 so basically you create this product and looking for, you know, problems to solve. And that's not the way you have to go. Right? You have, there has way, to be right? a problem right? already, and then you have to yeah. create the product to solve that problem. Exactly right? because right because because if you don't do because if you the the pro and also the problem has to be you know big enough mm -hmm. because the problem is not big enough then you don't have enough market to support your company. Okay. You don't have big enough market to support so, company. So right? the yeah. for the entrepreneurs out there, they have to build a product that solves a problem, and they have to find the right investors that are looking to solve that problem with them. Is is that yeah. basically what yeah. I how I'd uh, summarize yeah. your advice? Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people, what they they not you know what they do. I think that's actually very common. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, recently there's a company that I'm basically coaching, and then I stopped them by you know launching a product. So, so because the thing is this, right? So if you are if you are small, mm -hmm. if you're starting out, your resource is very limited. Yep. If I if you spend a hundred k to build this prototype, if that product doesn't work, I'm not gonna have another hundred k to do another you know revision or whatever. You you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. So that's why if I have a product looking for a market, you know it's not gonna work, right? Got it. Um, because it might end up like, you know, a whole bunch of things that the feature is not right or whatever you design is not right, right? Yep. So so the company actually I've, I've been, I was helping out with actually making a, a variable, right? So with some smart sensors and things like that. Smart right? sensors, okay. Smart sensors, smart sensors, yep. right? Uh, it's like quite popular, right? Quite popular right now is like for uh, uh, health and wellness, right? Yeah. Uh, so we track all your vital sign, your, you know, like sweat level, like, you know, Oxygens like you know, blood. I mean, blood level, oxygen. I mean, oxygen level in your blood, and you know, things like that. Interesting. And okay. then, yeah. Uh, so, so yeah. So, so basically, is that, uh, you know, whatever they come out is something lot like not comfortable for people to wear. It can look kind of odd, you know, that kind of thing, right? <laughs> Yep. So that's why I go back to what I'm saying that you need to talk to more people. You have mm -hmm. more people so later on, right? I have them to have a lot of people to to basically test the product, or the it. prototype they make. They was about to launch it, right? So I probably save them like you know, I save the shirt. <laughs> that, that makes yeah. sense. You save the money and you saved uh, partially saved your investment as well, and you saved the entrepreneurs some time. And yeah. they were coachable, yeah. so you selected the right team. Hey, mm -hmm. it. Porter, it's been a pleasure, but it looks like our time is coming to a close. I just wanted to ask you one thing. Uh, you've told us plenty, but uh, is there a way where the business owners out there can get in touch with you? Oh, yeah. I mean, if they just go uh, sign up and say, you know, do the uh, sign up, you know, with the intake form of the CNPP program, right? Okay. As long as, you know, it's the Western region, it's going to come to you know, to our chapter, and then I'm okay. certainly happy to talk to them. Wonderful, wonderful. So guys, you, you heard it here. You can get in touch with Mr. Porter Wong himself. 
if you go through the Western chapter of the U.S. Pan Asian American Chamber of Commerce and uh, go make the request via an intake form. Thank you so much for being so generous with your time, Portal uh, Porter. Sorry, Porter. It's uh, <laughs> been a great conversation and it's a great opportunity to listen to a seasoned expert in the investment community. And hopefully this has taught people how to navigate around the business environment, especially for the communities and the entrepreneurs that are currently unserved. And uh, I wanna thank the audience as well for tuning in and hope you can join us next time on Navigating Business. Remember, this is a business podcast brought to you by the US PAC, our US Pan Asian American Chamber of Commerce in conjunction with the Community Navigator Pilot Program, the CNPP, uh, through the U.S. Small Business Administration, are also known as the SBA. Again, Porter, thank you so much for your time, and thank you, audience. Till next episode, guys. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Bye.